<laughs> Hi people, it's me again obviously, Moino Um In this video, as you can tell from the header, I'm going to discuss the difference between um, between regular spirits that the average occultist globally works with and egregores because there is a distinct difference honestly and I'm also going to throw pagan gods in there. I'll try to keep it as short as possible. There is a difference. Listen, an egregore is like um, your very own personal Android, and I don't mean Android phone, I mean an Android like a robot, okay? Imagine having your very own personal robotic servant, like um, in the movie Prometheus, I forgot the guy's name, um, I forgot the guy's name, okay? Or the sequel to Prometheus, I can't put my finger on it, okay? Bottom line is that in, for example, the Alien franchise movie, you had androids, okay? Bottom line is they serve mankind, it just goes on, blah, 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 blah. It's like the, with an egregory, it's like having your very own personal android, uh, your very own personal robot. He serves you and he is essentially an extension of you. You created him from your own energy, if you're a magician or a sorcerer. And he essentially specifically follows your intent-based objective. You created him for the purpose of destroying someone or for the purpose of money. And he's going to do things the exact way that you intend on doing so. Okay, it works by your intent as is everything, your intentions. And he's essentially the embodiment of your intent. And an egregore doesn't need to eat, doesn't need to sleep, doesn't need to rest, doesn't need any of that. Okay, the egregore is literally just like a robot. He doesn't need any of that. He's always aware, he's always conscious, he's always active. Okay, he doesn't ever take it easy. The concept of taking it easy doesn't apply to him. He has no fluctuations in, in, in um, mood or energy or flow, etc. Of, of course, I don't mean, um, un, I mean, unless it's absolutely necessary. If it's necessary that he takes it down a peg, then he's going to take it down a peg. But I mean, he never, he's never in like a bad mood or a good mood or he's not in the mood, he's not motivated, he's not in the mood to do this or that. It just goes on. Again, these are things that you'll generally speaking experience with people. And that's what egregories are like. You can essentially view an egregory as an antivirus program on your device, your computer or mobile phone, you name it. You program it, for example, to scan nonstop. It's going to scan your device nonstop and it's never going to stop because it never gets tired. It never wants to quote unquote take a break or has any of that crap. It will do its thing mindlessly, just non-stop, until you command it to do otherwise. You program it to do otherwise. Generally speaking, in a nutshell, that's how egregories also work. It doesn't matter how much personality you give to your egregory, but, um, or to your egregories, but at a base level, that's how they operate, that's how they function. That's why, um, that's why egregories are what they are. And um, the benefit is that egregories, especially if you're working or your objective requires a lot of intent, then yeah, the egregory will really move mountains for you. The drawback is that egregories, just like other spirits, um, also have their weaknesses. They can do things, um, for example, they might have difficulty accomplishing some objectives depending on a variety of factors of which there are near in, insurmountable or incountable, uncountable, uh, a variety of factors in the world, near infinite variety of factors in the world. Um, they might have difficulty doing something in the world that is already present. But that's why egregories, they don't need an altar because people have asked me this stuff in the past. Hey, can I create an altar for my egregory? Can I do this? Or for example, a customer of mine or a customer... Customers of mine or a customer of mine, no. It's a bonus. You can do so if you want. It's going to help, but not a lot to the point where it's worth it. It essentially simply opens up one avenue for the egregory to accomplish his objectives. And, um, and the egregory doesn't need that in general because he already has numerous other um, avenues at his disposal compared to a different spirit, a quote-unquote regular spirit, a quote-unquote regular spirit. Um, so yeah, that's essentially it with egregores. Um, now I'm going to get on to quote-unquote regular spirits. What qualifies as regular spirits? The spirits that sorcerers work with by default are angels, demons, elemental spirits, you name it. 
the difference is that these spirits or spirits that already existed in the world, these aren't man-made creations. And this, yes, this also includes pagan gods. Listen, the whole concept of pagan gods being man-made agrobores is a technicality. Pagan gods still count within the context of this subject matter, this of, within the context of what I'm discussing, this subject as a whole, this topic, it, um, they still count as, um, as stationary spirits. They still count as regular spirits. Why? Because the people that created these allegories didn't do so intentionally. They didn't say, hey, I want to create a spirit, I'm going to do that. No, no, no. The people from ancient civilizations that worship pagan gods, that's why the majority of pagan gods are personifications of an aspect of existence, an aspect of life or a force of nature that could not be explained due to the severe technological limitations you had back in the day, for example, in BC times before Christ and and every, everywhere between then and all the, leading all the way up to the Middle Ages, essentially, um, before the concept of pagan gods was even a thing, and the concept of an egregore was a thing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the whole concept of the whole uh, of pagan gods being egregore is just a technicality. That's just by coincidence, let's just put it that way. That's why you're seeing that most gods have um, an affinity for an aspect of nature, god of thunder, god of lightning, god of this, god of that. God of love, God of hate, God of war. Um, because these ancient civilizations said to themselves, there has to be a higher being in the world that is responsible for this aspect of creation, this aspect of existence. You know, the concept of warfare. There has to be like, there has to be a spirit that essentially, you know, has, that essentially causes warfare and that is the highest spirit that causes warfare in this subject or in this um in this um, specifically regarding the subject matter which is warfare and that's why the Greeks created Ares that's why uh, the Romans Greek created Mars it just goes on and it, it just goes on okay um, that's why multiple civilizations that never came into contact with each other have these spirits um, Um, that's why you've got Marduk, for example, the Babylonian Marduk. It just goes on, okay? My point is um, that it's just a technicality. For all intents and purposes, within the subject of what I'm discussing, I mean, within the context of what I'm discussing, you can peg pagan gods, you can dub them regular or stationary spirits. That's why I call them stationary spirits uh, within what I'm discussing. By stationary spirits, I mean spirits that are already part of the world. Spirits that weren't created by man, essentially by an individual, deliberately and whatnot. No, spirits that are already part of the fabric of existence, the fabric of creation, um, of everything that is in existence, better put. And the thing is that these spirits, with them, yeah, for maximum effect, you need an altar. The same way that we as people are also entities... But we, we vibrate on a multitude of levels, primarily astral and physical, okay? Our astral bodies or spirits are in the astral dimension and our physical bodies are in the physical dimension. Now, you as a whole, within the material world, you need a, 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 an HQ, you need a, a base of operations, and that is your house in general. That's the place where you eat, where you sleep, where you go to the bathroom, where you do all the stuff you do, essentially, where you think about what you're going to do next where you essentially, um, that may essentially, that you essentially need. This is the place where you do all of your things um, that makes it so that you can lead an optimal existence as in, hey, an actual maximum quality of life. Now imagine if you didn't have your base of operations, you didn't have your house, you didn't have a place that you call home. Okay, home doesn't refer to the physical location, it refers to, um, home refers to, refers to, essentially a place that represents you and your habits and your mentality and whatnot. So it doesn't matter whether you own a home or whether you rent, it does not matter. By definition, home is a living space that you occupy that represents your personality because you occupy that space for the majority of the time or at the very least partially. That's home. Um, in order to 
again, like I said, you need to be able to function properly, you need a home. In order to function properly, you need a home. Whereas, imagine if you didn't have a home, you didn't have a base of operations, you just like lived alongside the street and that's it. You can imagine how, how difficult it is to even remotely, you would not even be able to live a life adequately. You would be literally doing nothing but surviving. Let alone doing anything else, let alone actually functioning optimally. That's my point. Now, stationary spirits that are already part of the world, like angels, demons, and pagan gods, and etc., and so etc., and, 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 et et and so on and so forth, um, they don't need an altar. Okay, they literally don't need an altar, but don't expect tremendous results from them because, like I said, they need a base of operations. And by default, they need payment. Nothing in this world is free. So the only way that they would be willing to help you out for free is as a one-time exception or if you coerce them, if you force them into doing so. But you can already tell how, how horrible that idea alone is. Just bringing it up is already pissing me off almost, so to speak. Because it's the equivalent of imagining working for someone and your employer forces you. For example, you have a con you, you've got like a contractual agreement going and he forces you, he or she forces you to work for free and you're not getting anything out of it whatsoever. Are you going to do your job even remotely adequately? No, you're going to do your job reluctantly and you're going to literally do as little as possible. You're going to slouch off as little as as much as possible, you're going to skim over shit left and right as much as possible. It just goes on and on and on. That's why, um, <clears throat> and that's the same thing with these spirits. In the old school way of working, they used to always threaten spirits as in, hey, in the magical, I'm in my magical circle, protected. The spirit is in the triangle of the art. Typical old school golden dawn type of working. Yeah, I hereby command you spirit, you know, you do my bidding, blah, 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 yeah. No spirit will enjoy, no no spirit will enjoy to being treated like that, being nothing but being essentially doing nothing, being nothing but harassed essentially and forced into doing something, because by the laws of, by the spiritual and astral laws of the universe and by God's will, you force him to do that. He doesn't enjoy doing it. He's he's astrally contractually obligated to do it, but don't expect him to actually be motivated to do so. So he's going to do as little as possible. And again, that's my point. You treat these spirits well, and most importantly, like I said, they need a base of operations to manifest in the physical plane. I've already discussed all of this in a separate uh, video call that you can check out in the end screen if you haven't seen it, the importance of an altar. They need a physical, the same way that you have a, live in a house, they need a physical anchor to manifest optimally for maximum results in a physical plane because it's a lot easier for them, okay? It's like, it's like a door that leads to a house. But imagine having a house with no doors, no openings whatsoever. It's just like a big, big slab or block of concrete. There are no openings whatsoever, no window, no door, no nothing. Exactly, how the hell are you gonna get inside the house? That's my point, it's gonna, get, it's, it's gonna be noticeably harder. It can be done, but it's going to be harder because I would have to like smash a hole with a sledgehammer and then I'd have to crawl in and out of the hole. The whole process is inconvenient. Whereas with an altar, it's like having a nice nifty door. You know, the spirit goes in and out of the house as much as he wants. And the house in this metaphor is the material plane. Okay. These spirits already hold a certain amount of dominion in the material plane. They can already manifest. But my point is, it's about the principle. They function optimally on your behalf if they literally have an altar, if they have an anchor, they have a base of operations as in, hey, I can work from this altar, I can work from Marino's altar and I can, I need to do this, I need to do that. They can easily do so, okay? They can easily go up and down and whatnot, which is convenient for them. And that's why stationary spirits need that, okay? They become stronger to experience the same way egregores do, but the difference is that they are entities with their own personalities, their own thoughts and needs and wishes and desires the way God created them. As opposed to egregores, egregores, like I said, egregores are literally like mindless beings. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, for the sake of comparison, egregores are like, it's like comparing a person to a cell phone. A cell phone is an inanimate object. You know, it has no feelings or anything like that. 
It has no level of consciousness that a human being possesses. So a cell phone will literally just do as commanded. Doesn't matter how many times you tell it to do so, it is going to do so. And with an egregore at a base level, it's the same. Doesn't matter how many, how, how highly personalized you create your egregore, okay? But at a base level, at the simplest, most genericest of levels, the egregore will still have that proper, those properties because when it all boils down to it, what it comes down to in the end is that it's still an egregore. And um, it's there to serve your wishes and needs and desires until dismissed or destroyed or whatever. Okay, it has no thoughts of its own or anything like that. Its sole purpose is what it's programmed to do. I create egregore, destroy that person. The egregore, the only thought that is going through that egregore's mind is literally destroy person, destroy person, destroy person. Master, Master Moreno said destroy person, destroy person. That's what the egregore does non-stop. The egregore doesn't think about anything else as in, hmm, you know, I need to ask Master Moreno this or that. Let me see if I can do this. No, 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 no. Non-stop, okay? If the egregore is confronted with a situation that requires some fine-tuning or something, he's going to get back to you essentially and he's going to ask you hey you know this is the update you know what you want me to do etc but again at a base level it's still like an android it's like a robot boom 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 it never need, it doesn't need rest it doesn't need anything that's why egregores don't need altars they become stronger through sheer experience and they don't have the need for anything anything doesn't matter whether where they are what they do it does not matter Okay, they don't, they're essentially, they're essentially based on everything I've said, exempt from that so-called rule. An, an altar is a bonus for them, but it's not necessary. They already function optimally without an altar, as opposed to stationary spirits, because they're man-made. They're, they weren't part of the world until you made that to be the case, of course, with God's will, as is everything. Uh... But with stationary spirits, like I said, uh, so angels, demons, pagan gods, these spirits are already part of the world with their own person. They were already part before you encountered them. And even if you dismiss them, like I said, they will continue to go about their own business. They have their own lives, their own personalities, their own wants, needs, wishes, and desires. They are their own beings, the same way that we all are as human beings. Okay? Someone doesn't need to... For example, even if I, I stop being friends with someone or if I stop, um, if, I, if I, for example, stop doing business with someone, you name it, life goes on for me. I'll continue to thrive. I'll continue to exist uh, the same way that I've been doing regardless of who, who comes and goes in my life. And vice versa, it's also the same thing. Okay, I come and go in someone's life, the person will continue to exist and go about their existence. And it just goes on because the person is their own being in their own right. And yeah, that's essentially it. Bye.